Today we're going to take an adventure into reselling and we're going to talk about starting, expanding and changing your business. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about starting, expanding, and changing your business. Now, if you're just starting off into reselling and you're thinking about what to do and how to start it, what type of business that you're going to be, there's many different things that you can do or sell these days. I can tell you one thing, though, that the majority of people who succeed in this have a passion or some sort of niche that they've always been into. Now, we got into reselling from toys back in the 90s. I loved the 70s and 80s. That's where I grew up on. I knew all the toys. I knew all the lines. I knew the character names. I knew what to look for when I was out garage selling or going to thrift stores back in the early 90s. So when we first started selling, we made a ton of money selling all those old toys that we ran into. Soon after that, we realized all these other areas and categories, and we expanded from there. But the start that we got and the start that most everybody that I personally know got came from area of collecting that they had since a childhood. Now, a good example of this are those who sell shoes and who have been into tennis shoes since they were a child and know all the brand names, the styles, and the whole works. Those people love shoes. They wear them. They're into them. They would probably buy them whether they were into selling them or not because they love shoes. A lot of the stuff that I bought when I first started were things that I loved either way. It didn't matter if I was going to sell them or not. I didn't even actually buy most of what we started selling in the early days to resell. I bought them because I liked those items. That's the biggest way you can get into this. You may have collected Barbies as a child and have hundreds of them and know all about them. Those are the items that you should center in on when you're first starting off. You don't have a learning curve to figure something out. Another thing to look at are those things you have around the house that you're not into, not interested in, or aren't being used forever. I usually have a rule if it's something around that I haven't used in a year or two, I usually put it up or get rid of it or do something with it. No sense in having something that you just don't use. So stuff around the house is a perfect way to find things to start your business and then grow it from there. Now what I do and would recommend as well is making a list of the top 10 things that you really enjoy, whether it's books or riding in a car, whatever it may be, there may be some aspect of that that is something you know more about than anything else. Knowledge is power, and if you can start with some base of knowledge for something to sell, you've got one up on everybody else. If you collected baseball cards as a kid, that would be a perfect example, or stamps or coins, or you're a heavy BMXer back in the day, and you know everything there is to know about a pedal bike. You know, that could be a great area to sell things. All of those types of things sell great. Comic books, which I collected. Action figures and toys, which I collected. Some of the earliest things, as I said, were toys. And some of them dawned back to the 70s, even back into the 60s, things that I had as a child. It speeds up your abilities if you pick something that you like and know something about. Even if you don't know something about it, take that list of those 10 items that you really like and make out pros and cons for each one of those. That will really help you decide on what you like the best. If you like something, in all honesty, to me, it doesn't feel like work. If you enjoy what you sell in the business of this, it is really a big plus for you. Like clothing-wise, I didn't like clothing, but there is a lot of money or was a lot of money to be made in clothing. Now, I know there's still people that make a ton of money off clothing, so it's not a dead area, but in many areas of the country it may be. So when you're figuring out pros and cons, one of the cons would be you can't source it for some items. If you can't find it, you can't sell it. Changing up your business takes the basic same thought pattern. Make a list of the 10 things that you like. Do some pros and cons on those. A lot of people, just like me, scan books to get into this or started reselling clothing. If you don't like it like I hated it, think about other options that you can do. There may be things that you really, really love, but it wasn't an option back then. It may be now because you have revenue coming in for the other items that you're selling, like the clothing and like the books. It's a rat race in some cases with clothing, especially around here. If you didn't have other areas to sell in at this time, through the pandemic, you may not have been very successful. You may be in dire need, so you may need to switch up your business. 
So take all of those into consideration. Liking what you do is a huge, huge plus. It's not monotonous. It doesn't feel like you have to drag yourself up in the morning to list items that you really just don't care about. That is a huge drag on motivation in my book. Again, we got out of clothing. I got rid of another obstacle, another aspect of my business that I just couldn't stand, that was troublesome, that had a high return rate. You had to take a lot more pictures for it. You got to do a lot more details. You have to take measurements. Those are all cons for clothing in my book. Again, we've centered in on things that we sell because of the pros and cons of those items. Even if you don't want to change up, but you want to expand your business, make a pro and con list of your top 10 things that you love. I am telling you that can be a big, huge plus to finding other things to sell, things you may have never thought of. If you've got a spouse or a partner or someone else in your life, run it by them. Do a brainstorming. Throw these ideas out there. It's the best way, the best process that I know that can really help you either start, change, or expand your business. These are all key things that I do throughout the time. When you're putting together your pros and cons list, if they have a ton of cons and not many pros, mark them off the list and move on to the next item. As you go through those pros and cons as well, you will narrow the list down to just a couple. As you go through these 10 items, that list will get smaller and smaller. You'll have several that have huge amounts of pros with very little cons. Those are the areas that you'll want to look into the heaviest and spend more time deciding on what to do. Sourcing, again, has to be the biggest pro on that list. Another one of the biggest pros is profitability. Another one of the pros that you want to have is that it's cheap to buy. Those are the three top pros on any of my lists on determining what items I want to sell. You are making the decision on what to sell. Don't let anybody else steer you to something that you just won't be happy in because it will drag your business down. There are many different things that you can sell. The broad range and spectrum in this day and age is just huge and massive. People sell all kinds of weird items that most people wouldn't have a clue on. And they found a niche. What is your niche going to be? Do the top 10, I promise you that will help you, especially if you're just starting out. Even if you're expanding or growing your business or changing it up, I can guarantee you though that all of these sorts of activities will definitely expand your mind, will have you thinking outside the box and new and different directions to take your business. And that's how we have grown our business and how you can as well too. But that's the motivation here on Father's Day. Hopefully that gives you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. When I was a kid, the closest you could get me to a fish was the aquarium. Now, thanks to McDonald's, I'm the expert. You see, most fish is not government inspected, but all McDonald's fish is U.S. government inspected grade A. And it's all prime white filet. No fish cakes, not ground up, not mixed with other fish. It's a filet of fish. The best-selling fish sandwich in America. Tell them your nickname, Henry. They call me Jaws. Quality you can taste. This world is an amazing place and there's really nothing in here that you can't do if you put your mind to it. Being rich doesn't mean you'll be happy. You can have more money than anybody in the world and still be unhappy. I would rather be happy with my family and have my freedom of time than to be rich. Money isn't everything.